We got a great matchup coming up. You know, there's a few fighters that you can really see who are operating outside of the UFC that you just kind of know the UFC matchmakers right. have their eyes on. Michael Chandler was one that came over from Bellator, and now we have MVP, Mr. Yeah. Michael Venom Page. And he's got a great first fight now that he's a UFC signee, and it's the perfect opponent to welcome him to the organization. It's Kevin Holland. Mm -hmm. It's somebody who's going to give him the type of fight that he wants to have, which is going to be a stand-up, technical, striking fight that we all enjoy. And I think it's a really tough fight for him, but it's also a fight that he can win. I want to get your initial thoughts on the fight itself and what the trajectory of MVP's career could potentially look like in the UFC now coming in at 36 years of age. Well, I think this was a great signing for the UFC. And if you're a guy that's not in the UFC, but your goal has always been to get to UFC, and you're not signed by them right now, but your name's Michael, I think you've got a pretty good chance. Yeah. <laughs> as long as your uh, organization that you're currently in is willing to let go of you, or the UFC just offers you more money. Michael Venom Page is older than he appears. I think he's got a lot of longevity in his career left, even though he is past 35 years old. And man, this guy belongs in the UFC. He's entertaining. He's got the it factor, the name MVP. That Super just works. Cool. Yeah. yeah, everything about him works. And it really is interesting to me that he's in the same weight class as Kevin Holland. Because if you could tell me I can make matches and it doesn't have to be within any sort of promotional uh, rosters, I can just go with, ever, with whichever fighters I want. I would probably wind up putting MVP and Kevin Holland together no doubt. If, I, if I had yeah. to draw those two names. Those guys just know how to entertain a crowd. Kevin Holland is as undeniable of a character as the UFC's ever seen. They, he didn't get the name Big Mouth for no reason. You That's know, right. He, at first, Dana White's like, what can I do to get rid of this guy? And now he's like calling him up when he, he needs somebody to save a card. He's calling Kevin Holland when he needs a major move to be done. And that just speaks volumes as to what Kevin's willing to do behind the scenes and when the cameras are on him. I think this is the perfect first matchup for MVP. I know jumping into a fight with a guy who just a couple of years ago went five up and five down in the UFC yeah. is a lofty uh, first fight or a debut in the UFC. But MVP has shown us over time, you know, I've got the skills to hang with the best strikers in the world. I don't really see him uh, being able to withstand a test against some of the best grapplers the UFC has, especially at 170. But if you've got somebody willing to play ball, let's entertain the crowd. Look, well, Stephen Wonderboy Thompson has come out, which that would also be a really interesting awesome fight. fight. He came out and said, look, I'll fight the wrestlers. I've fought them my whole career, and I'm pretty damn good at defending takedowns and getting my hand raised even still unless they're the top, top guys in the world. But – I want to entertain the fans. I'm here to put on entertaining shows, so give me some strikers. And I think that's such a cool move. And it's funny, anytime somebody calls for a striker, it seems like Kevin Holland is the one that they end up calling. Yep. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson had a great fight with Kevin Holland. And I think this one between MVP and Kevin will be very entertaining. And look, Kevin Holland knows how to grapple. He's a very good, legitimate Travis Luter black belt. He's very good with his wrestling, even though he's a tall body and you don't see him changing levels and shooting for takedowns all that often. In the short uh, amount of time that we've seen him grappling in the UFC cage, you can see he knows exactly what he's doing, how to get up in, from dangerous positions, and how to actually you know, cause some trouble and get people flustered when he does take them to the ground or when they take him to the ground, he's able to reverse it. I think MVP has the perfect dance partner for his debut. I think this one's going to be a fan favorite. And automatically, even though it's only three rounds and we're only a couple months into the year, this one's going to be a candidate for fight of the year. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really fun fight. And yeah. to your point about um, Kevin being a good grappler, let's not forget that he submitted Mr. Stranglehold himself, Michael Chiesa, who's go. known for being an, a stellar grappler. Yeah. So just because of what Hamzat Chemayev did to him, you can't really discount the fact that Kevin Holland knows what he's doing both on the feet and on the on the mat as well. Spoiler alert, he'd do that to Michael Venom Page as well. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. But yeah. here's the thing. This is the way that the UFC matchmakers handle signees who have a lot of star power outside of the UFC who are also a little bit older in age. Think about Alex Pereira. Think about Michael Chandler. Now think about Michael Venom Page. What they do is they bring them in. They give them big marquee matchups that are favorable for them 
and they try to fast track them, especially if there's a story there. Right. We saw Michael Chandler fight for a title. We saw Alex Pereira now in just a handful of fights become a two weight class world champion. Mm -hmm. And Michael Venom Page said that his vision is Leon Edwards in a stadium in England. Now, Sign uh, me up. you have a long way between right now and that day ever coming to fruition. Yeah. But believe me, the, the matchmakers, the Sean Shelby's, the Hunter Campbell's, they're thinking about that potential matchup as something that they could do that would would do big numbers especially in england sure. which is just firing at all cylinders right now as far as mma is concerned as i said earlier in the video this is not one of those i'm here for a, lo a, a long time i'm here for a good time type of situation um it's it's more of the latter where you're going to be here for four five six fights at the most right. and whatever transpires transpires but don't think for one second that if mbp can get in there and show kevin holland that he's not only he doesn't only belong in the ufc but he's actually better than kevin holland that they may give him another one or two more favorable matchups and you know crazier things have happened and we could see something like that the UFC doesn't bring in signees late in their fighting careers as far as age is concerned unless they have some fun fights that are potentially available that they could map out for them so I see the UFC really looking to this matchup to see what they're going to do with the rest of MVP's career but it could be a lot of fun if he gets his hand raised yeah this is a perfect addition to the roster and ever since I'd say 2022 it's safe to say in the UFC, the British are coming. Yes, There's a no whole doubt. lot yeah. of great fighters, and all of them are making their way either to the belt or getting right into title contention. And now you've got another interesting character at, the, uh, at 170. I think it's lofty goals for him to try to get to Leon Edwards, and the road to Leon is just going to be treacherous. Murderer's road. Unless they try to give him just nothing but pure strikers. But at the end of the day, 170 only has a handful of those guys who are just striking that don't really like to mix the martial arts or take the fight to the ground. You know, if he ha if he has to get in there with a Shavkat or he has to get in there with a Sean Brady, somebody like that, these guys are going to take him to the ground. They're going to try to test him. And while I think he's got the skills to, to keep the fight on the feet and he's able to win a lot of situations if he can keep it at kickboxing range, it's a very lofty goal for him to try to get to Leon Edwards. And who knows if Leon will even have the belt by then. But... Everybody knows that the UK brings a great crowd. They have one of the most electric audiences that you could possibly put on fights for. And I think Michael Venom Page, after all these years in Bellator and all that he's done over in the UK and in Europe, has proven that he's actually quite a big star over there. And if they're able to inject him just on you know fight nights and pay-per-views that happen out in the UK, I think he could really give them a nice little bump over there. You put him, Patty Pimblett, Leon Edwards, Tom Aspinall on a card, you're talking about a mega That's card. That's a mega card. Uh, that would yeah. be a lot of fun. And Michael Venom Page, like I said, he's a great character. He's very entertaining. The fans are going to love him. He's a viral machine. I mean, I think like he's breaking people's legs with kicks. He's jumping off the cage. He's doing all sorts of cool stuff. I don't really know all the anime stuff and the configurations for how he, you know, says, yeah. does all this cool stuff, but people get it. People like what he's doing. And I think the UFC just got a really good new signee under their belt. And I'm really excited for this one. As am I.